In this lesson, we're going to talk about the Sentinel loops in C++. What are they? Well, as stated before, they are the while loop and the do while loop. So let's take a look at the while loop first. The syntax for the while loop is while expression statement. Again, expression has to be completely within those parentheses. Don't forget any logical operators that you want to slap onto that must be within the parentheses. So the keyword or reserved word is while. Expression must be a valid C++ construct that evaluates to either true or false or numerical value. Again, non-zero is true, zero is false. Statement is a single simple C++ statement with the required semicolon or a compound statement. Multiple statements contained within curly braces. So let's take a look at an example. This is an example of a infinite loop. Why is it an infinite loop? Well, let's take a look. How does it work? Actually, let's go back to the template and describe how this construct works. The compiler is going to check when we enter the while loop. It's going to check the truth value of expression. If that evaluates to true, then statement is going to be executed. After that, control passes back up again to the expression and it is going to be checked. If it's true, statement is executed. Goes back to expression. This continues until the expression changes to false. Once it changes to false, then we exit the while statement. So, let's take a look at our first example. Now, why is this an infinite loop? Well, take a look. The expression here is 7. Does that evaluate to true or false or numeric value? Well, of course, yes, it's a numeric value. It's non-zero, and therefore it is true. So, the statement, see out hello, that's going to be executed. Then control passes back up to expression, which is 7. It hasn't changed. It's still true. We output hello. Check the expression. 7, it's still true. Output hello, and that goes on ad infinitum, and we get a column of hellos millions of times before we realize we have an infinite loop. Remember what I said earlier in the lesson prior to this, that is, there must be a loop control variable. What's the loop control variable here? Well, actually, there is no loop control variable. There's a loop control expression, and that's 7. The loop control variable is that right there. It's a constant. It's not a variable. It's not going to change. Its truth value is true, and that's how it's going to stay. Remember that value, the loop control variable, has to be initialized, checked, and updated. In this case, there's an initialization to 7. It's checked, yes, but it is never updated. It never changes its value. And that's how we end up with an infinite loop. Let's look at another more realistic example. Here we're going to prompt the user for a value a number between 5 and 89 inclusive, and we read it into our variable input. We hit the while loop. It says while input is less than 5 or input is greater than 89, output the message. The value is unacceptable. Try again and see in input. So let's take a look. What is the loop control variable? Well, the loop control variable is, again in this case, the variable input. Where is it initialized? It's initialized right here. Notice that's outside of the loop. These things do not have to happen inside the loop. Where is the loop control variable checked? It's checked right here. And where is the loop control variable updated? It's updated here. So we have our initialization, we have our check, and we have our update. Once that condition is satisfied, the check, once input is greater than or equal to 5 and less than or equal to 89, this condition becomes false, control passes out of the loop, and we get the output statement. The value input is in the interval from 5 to 89. Let's take a look at another example. Here we initialize a variable sum to 0, and it's a long integer, a short counter, and we initialize it to 1, and we jump into a while loop. While counter is less than or equal to 100, sum plus equals counter counter plus plus. So what are we doing here? Well, let's see. The loop control variable, what is it? It's counter. It's initialized right here. It's checked here. And it's updated right there. So it starts out at 1, increases by 1, and is added into sum, which has been initialized to 0. When the counter gets to 101, 
the condition here is false and we jump out to the output statement. The sum of the first 100 integers is sum. So what this loop is doing is accumulating a sum or tallying up the sum of the positive integers from 1 to 100. Example 4. Here we have a const string. Question 1, what is 8 minus 3? Const short ants q1 equals 5. Now if I was putting this into a real program, I'd be very tempted to put a comment here saying something like update question 1 if changed. That's a big flag that says if you're going to change this short, you better change the string just above it. So we output question 1 and we input answer. Answer is going to be our loop control variable. That's what the user is going to enter in the prompt. And we make a check. So the check is actually a function of answer. It's answer minus the, the constant ants q1, which is 5. So if somebody enters 8, 8 minus 5 is 3, not equal to 0. That's true. Therefore, this gets executed. Incorrect answer. Please try again. There is a reprompt and update of the LCV. Once the value of 5 is input, then 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 not equal to 0 is false, and we output down here to the output statement. Your answer is correct. Congratulations. All right, an infinite loop example. This looks suspiciously like the example before. If we look at the difference, the difference is the C in statement right here. That's here, now it's gone. Here, gone. All right, what I've done is I've taken out the update of the loop control variable. What happens then? Well, now, if somebody enters the correct answer, if somebody enters 5 the first time around, then this condition here is going to be false, and we jump right out to the your answer is correct. The body of the loop is never executed. Notice that that's possible with a while loop. It is possible that the body of the loop is never executed. However, if they enter something other than 5, then the condition is true, and these statements are going to be output. So we say incorrect answer, please try again, see out question, and we have a prompt, but we have no read in. The value ants, the loop control variable, never changes. So this expression never changes, hence the truth value of what's inside that set of parentheses never changes. It's always true, it remains true, and we have an infinite loop. Okay, let's take a look at the do while statement. The syntax for the do while is do statement while expression. Once again, the reserved words are do and while. Expression is a valid C++ expression that evaluates to true or false or numeric value. Statement is a single simple C++ statement with the required semicolon or a compound statement, a sequence of statements enclosed within curly braces. Notice the semicolon here. I've put it here specifically because it is required in the syntax. You must have that semicolon to end that statement. So let's go back and look at it in general. How does it work? Control gets to the do, then statement will be executed, and then fall into the expression. C++ will evaluate that expression. If it's true, control passes back up to the statement, it's executed, and again, expression is going to be checked. If it's true, we come back up here to the statement executed, check expression. Once that becomes false, then we jump out of the loop statement to the next statement, whatever that is. I want to point out something that's different about the while and the do while. Notice that in the do while statement, the statement is executed at least one time. This is very important. That's the difference between a do while and a while. The body of the loop is executed, and then the expression is checked. This is what we know as a post-check sentinel loop. If we go back and look at the while statement, the expression is checked prior to statement being executed. And if that expression is false, then the body of the loop may never get executed. So if you have something that needs to be repeated but done at least one time, then it behooves you to use the do while statement. So under what kind of circumstances would you do something like that? Well, anytime you prompt for and read in information from a user, you want to do that at least one time. If you're checking the range of values that are entered. And remember, in this course, we're going to assume 
that when you prompt for a type of information, you get that type. That is to say, if you prompt for a character, you get a character. If you prompt for a number, you get a number. If you prompt for a string, you get a string. The code to check all of that is complex and not really important in this course. However, if you're going to prompt for some sort of a value, you can check the range of values. For instance, in the examples that I've shown you so far, we say we want to prompt for a number between 5 and 89. You can actually check that to see if the value input is in that range. So if you've got a program that's going to calculate the area of a circle and you prompt for the radius, then you can put that prompt and read in inside of a do while loop and check to see if the value entered is indeed positive and you will disallow the user from getting f away from that block of code without entering valid information. So let's take a look at examples. We declare two variables to type short, age, and count and we jump into our do while. So here is our prompt, here's our read in, and in this case we're going to count the number of times that a value is entered. So if age is less than or equal to zero, or age is greater than the max age, that of course is some constant we've set prior to this example, maybe it's 120, then we say this is not a valid value, and if count is equal to max allowable tries, then exit one. So we're saying if somebody runs this code, and let's suppose max allowable tries is five, and they can't enter a valid age in five tries or less, then we're simply going to end the run of the program and say, oh, we're sorry, you can't handle this, then we're not going to continue with the rest of the program. So we're going to prompt, read in, and we're going to do that while age is less than or equal to zero or age is greater than max age. So what we're doing here is we're stating what is it that is going to make us want to reprompt and read in. So in this case, age is going to be less than or equal to zero or greater than max range. Now a common mistake is to put and here. Some people say, well, if age is less than zero and if age is greater than max age, those are the conditions under which I want to reprompt. But you have to ask yourself, how many numbers do you know are less than zero and greater than 120? Well, there aren't any. And this, of course, will be vacuously false and you'll exit the loop. So it's not and, it's or. Sometimes it's difficult to figure this out when you're actually writing the code. And sometimes the best thing to do is write down the and or the or and then test it. Try it out. Hit it with valid values and invalid values and see what happens. OK, so there's our condition. It's a post-test loop. The condition is checked after the execution of the loop body at least one time. Example two. OK, so do to add enter an integer between 2 and 174 inclusive. And that is a multiple of 3. So this complicates the matter a little bit. So once again, our loop control variable is going to be input. Here is the prompt. Here is the, the initialization and the update. And here is the check. So let's take a look at the check. I've written it a little bit differently. What I've done is from this parenthesis to this parenthesis, I have written what I want and then negated it with that exclamation point there. So what I want is input to be greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 174. And I want input mod 3 to be 0. That means input is divisible by 3. When I divide by 3, the remainder is 0. That means it's divisible by 3. So it's easy for me to state what I want and then simply negate that. So if that becomes true, then I don't have what I want and I reprompt. Okay, so there's our condition as a post check loop. Okay, so now you've seen the sentinel loops. One final piece of advice that I have for budding programmers is you want to use loops appropriately. That is to say, if your code requires or warrants a sentinel loop, use a sentinel loop. Do not use a counting loop. Why do we call them a sentinel loop anyway? Well, a sentinel is a guard. So what we're talking about is there's some variable that's going to change somewhere in the execution of that code, and that's your guard, your sentinel saying, ah, something has changed, we're going to end the loop, or we're going to continue repeating what's going on. Now, as you'll see in the next lesson, the counting loop 
is a construct that you use when you know a priori. You know ahead of time exactly how many times you want to execute the body of that loop. Now there are ways to mess with the syntax of the for statement, the counting loop, and turn it into a sentinel loop. That's a bad programming practice. We don't want to do that. If you have a repeating process that warrants a sentinel value commanding the execution, then use a sentinel loop. Use a while loop or a do while loop. Do not use the for statement. And that's the end of this lesson. Next lesson, we'll take a look at the for statement, which is the counting loop in C++.